uh, Huva Homenta, this is good morning in uh, Finnish, and Buna Dimineata, this is good morning in uh, Romanian. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks again uh, to Jelena and to Peter uh, for organizing this, and uh, I welcome you to my presentation. I'm uh, really honored to be able to present this topic to you. So it is a very high level overview of cybersecurity because it's 30 minutes at, as all the topics are endless topics, especially in our fields, uh, business opportunities and technical challenges of cybersecurity. Uh, my name is Andre Kostin and I work at the University of um, Uvascula. I uh, very shortly about who I am, so to put myself a bit in the context, I'm senior lecturer and assistant professor at the University of Uvascula uh, from 2017 and I have uh, graduated my PhD from Uricom and Telecom Paritech in 2015 and my, obtained my engineering and uh, master equivalent degree from University Polytechnic of Bucharest in 2006. And my core specialties are, are focused on research, but also teaching. And the fields of my specialties are mainly firmware, IoT, embedded and device security, uh, and more generically, the system security, which is the all encompassing topic. And doing all that in in more or less automated and large scale applied security manner, applying machine learning uh, and other automation techniques. So the whole idea of this research to lead to better experts uh, to the society and also providing security innovation, such as security spin-off or insights into that world. Uh, that's why one of the topics is also the business opportunities. Um, so, what is cybersecurity? Uh, if you ask, uh, as in may, any field, if you ask 100 people, maybe you get 100 different answers, depending how cybersecurity affects them and how they perceive cybersecurity. Some would say that it is total control, somebody say it's useless, somebody would say it's uh, surveillance, somebody would say it's really cool and they want to be like hackers. So, it is uh, a very complex topic and it comes from from uh, many uh, reasons. Um, I'll start maybe as a warm up uh, in a nutshell what cybersecurity means. Well, it depends who sees you as a cybersecurity expert and how do you explain it to them. You might get a different projection of, of a cybersecurity specialist. Uh, and maybe you recognize some uh, screenshots from some of the movies, um, but the idea is that in reality, they, it's a combination of all these factors that you have to be like matrix and be multitasking, but also be a bit nerdy and be able to save the Titanic or crush the Titanic while at the same time looking at a very boring uh, uh, green on black screen of a command line tool. So it's, uh, it's also a very fascinating topic. Hopefully I convince uh, all of you, if you are not already convinced by before my presentation and during my presentation. Um, so, this is a very, very short list of what, what cybersecurity is, is about and where you need and you'll find cybersecurity. So, uh, in few words, cybersecurity is virtually everything inside and in between all these topics, and all these topics are, in fact, uh, topics that are being studied at universities uh, from uh, bachelor degrees up to postdoc degrees. And it's about computer security, uh, which is how to make a computer secure by itself. Then is the network security, how to make the computer send data over the internet or other telecommunication links, uh, both in secure manner. So it's network and telecommunication security. Then you have the information, but that information might be critical, sensitive, secret. So it's about how to make sure that that information is stored securely, transmitted securely, and only right people can see that. Uh, the database security, meaning that when you store your data, is it done securely or anyone can access it from the databases or other storages. Then the security of the applications themselves, but everything running in computer and networks and databases are applications and are those applications developed or running securely on the um, devices. 
operating system security maybe you have uh, you have this reminders from operating system that you need to update or patch your system so this also comes uh, as a security uh, cycle to the operating system uh, the cloud security basically who uh, uh, secures the cloud and who secures the computers in the cloud and who secures the data that is in the cloud we know that the cloud is secure or should be secure but how to do it properly and what about when there are multiple clouds and multiple providers how to properly implement that security and who is responsible for securing that then is the actual hardware security meaning uh, topics or research and knowledge how to actually make the actual hardware like your raspberry pi or your laptop or your smartphone is a piece of hardware it's a piece of electronics combined in a certain manner how to make this secure so that people will not hack it with just plugging some USB cable to your uh, smartphone or uh, laptop or they will not bypass your fingerprint reader. Uh, the mobile security, that's basically the, all the security which goes into mobile devices and smartphones are the most prevalent example, but uh, soon that type of mobile security will be available to self-driving cars such as Tesla with autopilot and remote software updates and all kinds of uh, mobile robots such as vacuum cleaner or other uh, types of uh, mobile robotic systems. And then there's the Internet of Things security. How do you secure everything from uh, your laptop down to your smart fridge, smart dishwasher, uh, smart vacuum cleaner uh, and smart uh, kettle boiling your water in the morning? So these are also topics that needs to be considered uh, when talking about security and when learning about security. And then the last thing uh, which is very important, many times overlooked, is the human-centric security. Uh, usually the security is as strong as, as the weakest link. This is uh, the usual mantra we say in cybersecurity. And unfortunately, many times, human is the weakest link in, in uh, all that uh, part. Of course, there are many other uh, links that can break from computer security down to IoT security, but the humans are uh, usually the um, weakest link. So how to create uh, cybersecurity resilient humans and specialists and able to recognize cybersecurity problems or attacks and hacks. And then the list is endless because on top of all these topics, there are ever emerging new topics such as digital privacy with all of its uh, applications which are directly linked to cybersecurity, um, surveillance, anonymity, spam, scam, you name it, uh, Bitcoin, blockchain, securing all those transactions and financial markets. So it's an endless uh, pool of possibilities for research and for business. So why cybersecurity is important you might ask well suddenly cybersecurity is so important and it came out of nowhere in fact uh, well cybersecurity is there mainly maybe from the 70s but it was more like a uh, like a thing for researchers where they could play uh, ground the cybersecurity uh, topics and ideas they have but now, uh, because everything becomes digitalized, we are living in smart societies that we have smart SOC. So we want to drive the societies towards smart societies based on uh, digital skills and digital, digitalized um, way of life. And all this digitalization uh, means that everything will be uh, one way or another connected to the internet and one way or another will be uh, open to hack. So for these reasons, there are strong pushes, uh, even though in my opinion, not very strong uh, enough, but still strong pushes recently uh, from regulations. For example, the renowned the EU Cybersecurity Act, which is uh, poised to revamp and strengthen the uh, ENISA, European Union Security Agency. Um, and establish a European-wide cybersecurity certification framework. So basically what it means, it means that there is also legal uh, frameworks and technical frameworks and procedural frameworks to make sure that all the products uh, or services or devices or specialists 
covering any of these topics you can see in the screen and I've been uh, detailing. They are more or less or have some basic cybersecurity baseline. So the idea is to start building cybersecurity in and not as an afterthought or as a result to some attack or breach or uh, something else. Uh, there are also, uh, besides regulation, which is basically a legal uh, aspect, uh, the cybersecurity is in important and increasingly important because of the financial aspect. And this is where liabilities, like including financial liabilities and brand and stock reputation uh, come into play. And of course, there will always be some competitor wanting to take down some other competitor and they'll use any means possible. So uh, data breach, which can mean that some uh, not important information or very sensitive information is stolen from a company or organization uh, and is announced to be leaked. So um, research has found that it affects uh, stock reputation uh, on average by uh, down by 5%, which is pretty huge uh, for, for a company building its value over time or uh, playing on uh, public markets or uh, being uh, liable in front of their uh, board of uh, investors. So uh, this is uh, also a serious problem. Uh, then, uh, of course, uh, if you think that uh, maybe if somebody hacks uh, somebody else's Facebook account is not critical, is not the end of the world, then it is truly so. They can create another account. Maybe they will be sad that they need to recreate all their um, friends, but it's not uh, critical. Uh, on the other hand, there are uh, things which are called critical infrastructures. And these are uh, mainly a couple of industries such as energy uh, industry uh, or energy, oil and gas. Um, and uh, some other which uh, basically are old time industries, but uh, which are required for our um, societies to function even without internet or uh, under attack. So for example, critical infrastructure attacks are really important because they affect uh, directly the, the life and societies and even lives. So they have, there were cases where uh, specific insecurity or uh, specific attacks targeted critical infrastructure such as the infamous Stuxnet uh, malware, which uh, was targeting uh, iron um, nuclear uh, facilities uh, and nuclear program. Uh, so it was successful to take down uh, many centrifuges in that nuclear facility, but at the same time, similar attack could be used by other groups to, for example, attack uh, other type of inf critical infrastructure where you, uh, it's uh, actual news, where in Finland there was a case that an entire city during a pretty cold winter uh, was cut off from, uh, from heating, which is pretty much critical infrastructure during a cold winter, minus 20, minus 30. And you never know when uh, this heating is coming back and it also damages the infrastructure because uh, if the infrastructure itself is not operational, it might start breaking different parts of the infrastructure. It's not about getting uh, cold in the apartment only. So there are many implications to, to cybersecurity and uh, cybersecurity attacks. Uh, and then, uh, of course, uh, it's, everything is about the data. Data is the new oil uh, of the century, as some, they started saying uh, in the 90s and uh, early 2000s and really uh, data is is very very important and critical aspect in all this play um, so uh, there are increased uh, pushes for regulation for data privacy uh, everybody knows about gdpr and similar um, efforts inspired by european union uh, in other places of the world um, and Basically, uh, many attacks or many uh, cybercrime um, related things, uh, they target data, whether it's uh, some uh, trade secrets or just plain passwords and accounts or some other type of data. Every, all pieces of data are uh, valuable. Uh, here, for example, you could see uh, that's um, uh, estimated average of how much a piece of data costs, for example, a phone number and a published phone number 
uh, date of birth, social security number. They have they all have a price tag in the cybercrime community, and this is only per item, meaning that if a hacker stole um, a database with 1 million social security numbers with their um, date of birth and uh, the name of a person, then 1 million by $10, it will be already worth about 10 million on the uh, black uh, market, underground market on, on the uh, dark web, for example. So everything comes with a price tag and uh, many times it's a financial drive for these cyber attacks. And for companies, as I mentioned before, uh, besides the minus five drop in, in on average for their stock, uh, they also uh, their fines or uh, settlements in court and uh, the average cost of each lost record uh, is about $150 uh, last year. So this year it might be even higher because uh, of changing regulation. Um, and most likely this will go, go up because, uh, well, there's always interest for, for new data. Um, so that's pretty much uh, also very important to secure your data. Uh, and basically there are different reports, but um, I've all, all the uh, screenshots and information, you have the links in, in the titles uh, and you can look more details after the presentation, but Basically, the state of cybersecurity 2020, in three simple words, it is bad. Meaning that 33% uh, of the respondents, which are uh, uh, cybersecurity information uh, security officers or uh, technical officers of companies, they say that it is likely 53% uh, of them likely will encounter a cyber attack in the next two months based on uh, the activity they see around their networks and uh, things like that. Um, also, the cybersecurity skill gap has been plugging enterprises for a year, and I'll come to that a bit later. Uh, but this very well fits into the uh, topic of smart SOC, where we want to build uh, next generation ICT specialist ready for the smart society, uh, where cybersecurity is a core and building part of it. So now business opportunities. I've tried to cover why uh, security is important. I hope uh, I convinced you. Uh, business opportunities, well, uh, cybersecurity merger and acquisition deal volume uh, was uh, a record high in 2018, 2019. Uh, there are uh, more than 30 deals which are worth each uh, more than 100 million. Uh, Private equity and venture capitalists uh, love cybersecurity because it's uh, a hot topic, a trending topic, uh, painful and required topic for many companies and customers. Um, the median cybersecurity uh, multipliers back to the investors are pretty good uh, compared to other fields. So it's between five, seven and six, eight. Uh, and if uh, you know uh, about uh, venture capitalists. Ideally, they are looking for a 10x re uh, return. So a median of 6.8 is pretty pretty good in that sense. And um, basically, uh, the total merger and acquisition volume for cybersecurity companies uh, is uh, was about 15 billion uh, in Europe alone in 2018. Uh, and currently, uh, this total VC investment in 2019 was 10 billion, as I uh, show you later. But uh, basically, you can see that there is an insane amount of cybersecurity companies. And this is just one picture depicting, let's say, uh, some of the most visible ones on the market. Uh, there are a couple more uh, charts by other companies who are also depicting different stage startups and big companies. Uh, so this chart, you can think of it, multiply by five, and then you'll get a more realistic picture of how many visible cybersecurity startups are there. And you can see that they have different market segments or market niches or address different market needs. And this basically maps to some of those computer security, network security, database security, and so on topics, which I mentioned in the first. So there's also plenty of of uh, fields and topics to choose uh, for uh, um, early stage uh, specialist in cybersecurity nowadays. 
this is another chart showing that again there's it's a uh, tremendous opportunity and in 2019 alone uh, more than 10 billion was invested in privacy and security companies uh, going slightly uh, towards 1000 deals and in total 9 billion and this is also increasing uh, even this year because there are a couple of IPOs and merger and acquisitions in the process by the end of the year and uh, this COVID uh, effect uh, and remote uh, working has also filled some of these uh, companies up. Um, so again, to recount, uh, cybersecurity is virtually everywhere. So there are business opportunities in all of these subfields and everywhere in between and uh, everywhere two subfields even interact, there's also a business opportunity. So there's no lack of opportunity and uh, no lack of money. Uh, there's maybe a lack of expertise on the entrepreneurial and technical side and uh, execution, but that's another topic. Now, a bit to the challenges. Uh, what would be the challenges for uh, uh, for the smart society or a newcomer or entering the cybersecurity? Well, at the same time, as encouraging as this looks, at the same time, you could see the uh, downside part of it. There are too many vendors and too many tools and still the attacks and uh, hacks and breaches happen. And then it we ask the question, then why it happens if we have so many good and awesome vendors and tools and then the other questions which uh, we might want to ask or companies uh, customers want to ask how to learn and integrate all all of these tools only if you take one tool from each category you already end up with about dozen new products and tools in your uh, network which you need to manage you need to maintain you need to learn how to effectively and uh, efficiently operate and this requires a lot of expertise which we don't have in the first place and then if you're a business uh, or entrepreneur mindset how to effectively compete against this huge number of vendors who already have secured uh, some funding one way or another so these are like i put this technical in parentheses because it's it's both technical and non-technical challenges um, just as a as a food for thought then there are more like a technical challenges and obviously we need for automated and AI based solutions and the reason is simple is not that AI is just a cool buzzword yes it is it can bring uh, investment to company but AI based anything will bring uh, investment maybe but we cannot as humans we cannot process this uh, projected uh, data amount 175 zettabytes well, zettabytes is basically uh, one million of petabytes and petabyte basically is um, one million of gigabytes. So it's a million of million of gigabytes and multiplied by 175. So normally uh, Google can process 20 petabytes a day. It's about 7,300 petabytes a year and we would need 24,000 Google equivalent companies just to process uh, working 24 seven just to process all the data we will be generating as a uh, global society uh, by 2025. So this is the projection. And uh, from all these 175 zettabytes, about half of it will be on IoT alone. Also, there will be 40 billion of IoT devices from fitness trackers down to uh, self-driving cars and everything in between and they come in myriad forms of shapes and technologies cars drones robots tvs you name it and then the technical and non-technical uh, challenges arise uh, like popcorn meaning that how do you remove a malware from a smart dishwasher or from a vacuum cleaner or your tesla car if you start giving it a thought it's really hard to remove a malware a proper malware from a computer which you are already using for 20 years if you need to start removing malware from smart dish dishwasher, it's a complete nightmare. How do we secure this? How do we make it usable? How do we make it uh, privacy preserving and so on and so forth? So yeah, there's a lot of technical challenges. Then multiply all these challenges by 20 billion and it's really, really a uh, tremendous amount of challenges. 
Also, there will be 4 billion of people connected or affected to the internet. Uh, they are not skilled in cybersecurity. Many of them coming to the internet just recently. They don't understand the cyber attack uh, patterns. They don't understand spamming and scamming. They click on the links. They don't have the basic security knowledge and hygiene. They use very simple passwords like their birth, birth date um, and so on and so forth. And the challenge is how and when to effectively keep teaching and training these people. And the key word in all this is to keep teaching and training. It's not a one-step process, but it's, a, it's, it's not a one-step um, uh, um, activity, but it's, it's a continuous process throughout the, the life. Even the cybersecurity professionals uh, with 20 years of experience, they always need to learn the latest attacks, the latest techniques, the latest malware, the latest tools to be able to cope with the amount of, of attacks and the uh, diversity of, of them. So it's a never ending uh, process and how to effectively do this for non-professionals or for young professionals. That's, that's a very uh, challenging topic. Um, and there, there are uh, not so obvious need for uh, reliable and trustworthy and explainable AI. Basically, how to secure or control the AI, which is supposed to secure the current technology. And because we cannot secure the current technology properly, how will we be able to secure the AI, which is supposed to secure the current technology? It's kind of a recursive uh, philosophical question. And then who is uh, going to secure the AI? Is it going to be, to be uh, government agencies or um, some other kind of organization? Because if it's uh, three letters uh, government agencies, then uh, we all know uh, how it works out for uh, encryption and uh, weak uh, cryptography uh, in the past, which gets broken now time and time again. Um, then there's uh, the topic of AI for security or security for AI. We should have both, but how and in which order and where to properly start. Are we using AI to first secure everything or, or we need first secure, proper security for AI so that we can start using AI for security? So that's more like a philosophical and how to do things question. And uh, obvious need for reliable and trustworthy human intelligence. What I call, well, I put it not artificial intelligence, but human intelligence. I think that's where we need to focus before we develop the next artificial intelligence because Apparently, there is a, a lack of focus in human intelligence. So by 2020, there will be a workforce gap of about 4 million skilled cybersecurity professionals. And that's a, just a lower bound estimate. So it's a huge amount. It's basically um, a huge amount of, of uh, skilled professional uh, missing in the field. Um, then uh, many recruiters uh, find the problem that they have job openings, but most uh, many candidates, 75%, they say that they are lacking skills or they somehow blame the education systems, meaning somehow uh, myself, for example, as I'm uh, representing this, but we have done little or nothing. So we really want and need to do something about that. So there is no more um, things like, like that. Um, and basically to be able to uh, close this gap uh, most effective uh, are education and training programs within or outside of the organization or a combination of them are the most effective um, uh, programs to uh, close this gap so how to start in cybersecurity? well there are plenty of ma uh, master and phd programs for example uh, university of Vivascular's phd and ma uh, master programs in cybersecurity. There's also a very good uh, place to search for uh, degrees in cybersecurity on ENISA cybersecurity degree maps. University of Vasco is there. Uh, if you have a cybersecurity degree program in your university, uh, it's good to put it there because it gets visibility and it also can attract uh, students uh, or uh, uh, teachers, professors, uh, and uh, provide uh, good advance for the topic. Then there's the cybersecurity certifications, and this is just a list of, let's say, most uh, valued or most um, uh, sought um, certifications. They cost a lot of money, and usually you get them if either when you have the money or uh, when the company or organizations pay, uh, pay it for you. 
But nevertheless, that's another way to bootstrap your uh, cybersecurity skill and career. And having one of these certified ethical hacker or um, offensive security certified professional or expert uh, is already a good way to get into the, the field. And then there's cybersecurity trainings. There are a gazillion of options, so to speak. They are online, offline. They are free, paid, premium, free trial. So if you just go online and search free online cybersecurity um, and Google this, then uh, you'll find so many cybersecurity trainings readily available so that you can start learning from the day zero. And then learn by doing, meaning uh, start, start take, practicing your skills in bug bounty programs, meaning uh, programs such as HackerOne, Bug Crowd, and so on, which are programs uh, to incentivize researchers to learn cybersecurity and also get paid by finding security uh, problems in uh, different uh, systems such as even Tesla cars, for example. So this is a very good example, uh, which can earn you experience, uh, res good resume, reputation, and maybe even considerable amount of money. So there is a uh, graduate uh, in cybersecurity, uh, and he was uh, participating in uh, bug bounty programs. And in a year, he collected enough money to buy his own Tesla just on bug bounty money, no other income. So it is possible, it's hard work and a lot of learning, but I hope this motivates uh, you uh, towards that. Uh, maybe it's not a Tesla, maybe it's something else, but uh, it's possible and you find your motivation for yourself. And to finish uh, we, on a <laughs> positive note, again, cybersecurity can be, again, a combination of all these. And even though many times what cybersecurity really, specialists really do can be described as this epic meme, uh, many times it can be also represented by brilliant uh, staff or working in a great team. Uh, and uh, that's, that's also very motivating. So don't let this uh, part of cybersecurity demotivate you from these two parts. Um, well, uh, that's end. I've I'm sorry, I'm a bit uh, over time, one, two minutes, but thank you for the attention. Uh, if you have any questions, happy to take them now or uh, later offline. Here you have my contacts uh, and uh, following our university and SmartSoc pages on LinkedIn uh, is very nice. So thank you again.